Okay. Thank you all for being patient with us. Okay, we are going to the um data science course, introduction to data science, which will be facilitated by Marilyn Ndu Boaku, um PhD scholar of data science and IoT, lecturer at University of Derby. Okay, let me say a little about uh, Marilyn Ndubuako. Um, she is an associate lecturer at the Department of Electro Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University of Derby, UK, where she has also been undertaking a PhD research at the intersection of artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. She has been track of leading, training, and facilitating teams in AI and IoT initiatives. She facilitates the team solving the AI for energy systems challenge in the September 2020 Helen Turing Institute Data Study Group. She was lead teaching assistant at Neomach Academy, an online summer school that attracted over 200, um, 2,000 students globally. Recently, she led and mentored the team as Lynn's lab that won second place at the AI Commons Hackathon. And the prize they got was um, $3,000 for developing an AI solution to eradicate hunger and food wasted in Nigeria. Marilyn takes a keen interest in driving digital transformation in the industry 4.0 and future of work era through AI and other frontier technologies. You're welcome, uh, Marilyn. Over to you, Ma. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, welcome everyone to the course. Thank you so much for joining. Can you hear me all right? <clears throat> Is it loud enough? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, so I'm just going to start sharing my screen. By the way, is there going to be a YouTube streaming or is, yes, it, is it all? There's a okay. YouTube streaming. Okay. Could you put the link on the chat as well so that maybe I can also monitor what's going on? Okay. Oh. That'll be done. That'll be done. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, sir, she needs the link for this YouTube. She also wants to check what's going on. Okay. So let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Anybody? Yes, we can, we can. Yeah, we can. can see your screen, yeah. All right, great. Okay, so welcome to this short course on introduction to data science. Um, just get right to it. So um, before we actually start, just to lay a foundation about the course. I know that, um, I mean, this event is like an energy industry event, but probably some persons may be at their, let's say, at different points in their journey to learning data science. Or some people may just have been hearing about data science and just want to know okay what is this data science about some people may have already started learning it so i just thought about how to make the course very inclusive such that people are different levels obviously it's a beginner's course so it's really going to be basic and um initially i thought about whether to actually get into some hands-on stuff but right now i don't want to focus on okay this language using any particular language because um you know it's it's up up to you right now to after the course to say okay this is what this la the language i'm going to learn in order to you know like continue in this or on this path yes yeah, so that's just the foundation so it's going to be really um a beginner's course that 
I'm going to link it as well to the oil and gas or the energy industry, really, because this is like the setting we're in right now. I'll link it in some ways, but it, it would really be uh, all encompassing, like um, regardless of your, your field of study, because maybe some persons here may be non-energy industry persons. Yeah, so it will still be relevant to you. Then um, at, at different points, I'm going to throw out like a quiz. So I'd like you to pay attention. And of course, at the end of the course, um, we can um, have discussions, you can ask questions, and I'll be very happy to, to answer your questions. Okay, so, um, all right. So the introduction has already been made, but I'm just going to, you know, speak about myself in the context of this course and, you know, what is really relevant in terms of the course. So I kind of, my background, I kind of like put it on two, on two fronts. There is the more academic side and there is the more industry and actually energy side. And there is a part that I couldn't really play. So the part um, in black is like sort of neutral. So um, like was mentioned, um, a lecturer at the University of Derby, currently this, semester I'm teaching an MSc Big Data Analytics model, that's a business analytics. So it's, um, fit, uh, it fits quite well to what we're about to do today. And I, I led or I facilitated um, a Neuromatch Academy course, which was an online, you know, summer school. So um, that was just in July. And we had like over 2,000 students. So I facilitated a small pod of about 10 students. But then I also um, had other teaching assistants that I, I was coordinating. And of course, I'm a PhD scholar. So my work is really at the intersection of AI and IoT. You know, so I'm designing machine learning algorithms um, to pre-process data at the edge of the network and all of that. So for the more industry side, which I think fits nicely with the energy and, you know, some really coming from those two backgrounds of the data science plus the domain, which is the, the energy. So I was the past um, Shlombije intel, intern and I also worked as a project engineer with OYSEV, which is an oil servicing company. So I really had like that, you know, it's been a while, so I, I could be a bit rusty now, but I have that setting, that background in the energy side. And um, recently I facilitated a data study group, Alan Turing Institute. And actually, interestingly, the, the project we worked on was AI for energy systems project. So we we're looking at um, in this, with the renewable energy sources, climate change, and with those changes that are happening, within the whole energy space. How can we um, predict the onset of blackouts? So blackouts are, you know, um, a little above just the outages we have in our power, our power grid. So, you know, when you have a like blackout, at least we understand what a, a, a Nigerian setting, when you say there's no light, NEPA has <laughs> taken the light, those kind of stuff. But this is really like blackout, like, um, disconnection of all the power lines and no supply at all. Yeah, so, but then the interesting part is that, because I know in, in the oil and gas, we're facing this, um, you know, issue right now where we're looking at what will be the future of the oil and gas industry given different um, variabilities like the renewable energy coming up, the climate change and all of that. So um, this re really is, is interesting. And I'm sure some of us that are in the energy industry as well are asking at this point, what is the future of my profession with these changes that are taking place quickly? Like how can I be relevant in my profession? And I think that's also where the, the skills 
that we are going to be looking at today, one of, of which is data science, is actually going to uh, really um, come in handy for you for, for the future of work. Yeah, and currently I'm a research intern at Modularity Grid, which is also energy. So we're looking at um, you know, designing IoT systems for um, low carbon emission energy systems, really. And that also ties to the whole climate change issue and how we can um, design climate conscious electrification. So enough of me, and let's um, really get right into the course for today. So what do, do I want you to take out of this course? Um, so first of all, we want to look at what is data science? What is a data science career? How, how would data scientists differ from other data geeks like data analysts? I'm sure you must have heard so many of these data stuff like data analysts, machine learning engineer, data engineer, AI specialists, so many of those things, and you'll be wondering, you know, what, how is one different from the other? Like, what are they expected to do? You know, so all those kind of questions. Yeah, this is a time to actually start unpacking those and understanding who a data scientist is and what a data science career looks like. And of course, another part is, so the workflow really of, a regular data science project. So what is a day in the life of a data scientist like? And that would be from data collection to data preparation to visualization to modeling. There are just so many things and we're going to unpack that. And I'm going to then um, give you a toolbox that you can use to actually start off your data science career. Yeah, so I hope that would be a good enough introduction for you. Okay, so the part one, so I split it into three parts really. So part one is what is data science? And this dog right here says, look at me, I know Python, I'm a data scientist. So <laughs> who is a data scientist? Um, what do they need to know? Is it just, okay, I know Python, I know R, I know how to program, and then I'm a data scientist. So let's look into that. Right, so really um, you can think about data scientists as someone who is within this funnel of, um, so you have of course, <coughs> um, a data scientist um, deals with data. So you can think of, you know, raw data, um, you know, coming in. So I, I like to look at this as, you know, like a, a workflow of input, processing, output. So input is the raw data and then processing everything the data scientist needs to have. And of course, the output is the insights you need, automation of tasks and everything that is really um, that you want at the other end. So of course, looking at that box, that funnel, like um, you'd see there, there are actually three key components that um, the data scientist need to have and they kind of they really like, there's an interplay between them so because there is the programming you have to really be good at programming to have programming skills or what some people call hacking skills then um statistics the map you know you'd you need to be able to understand you know how algorithms work how the map behind the, the algorithms because if you just write algorithms not understanding, you know, the math behind the model. Because for every model you have, there is a math behind it. There is a statistics component of it. And you, you might just, um, just look at it as a black box. But in actual sense, if you want to really be a good data scientist and really do creative and novel stuff, then in the long run, you want to understand the math behind stuff so that you can even go in there and 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 tweak it or if something is not working well if it's not working as you desire you can go in there and you know tune it the way you want or change some some stuff yeah so there's also the storytelling this part 
you know, sometimes we exclude it, but it is very, very important. The, the business acumen, the domain expertise, because without it, you know, really, what you, the question is, what are you trying to do? You want, as a data scientist, you, you're starting from the question. You want to answer a question. You want to solve a problem, right? So you start from the question. And what would inform you the kind of question you should even be asking in the first place? It would be this domain expertise. And I think that is where, um, for you energy professionals or students, that is actually where you're going to be very, very relevant. Because if you bring someone that is that knows nothing about this domain to solve a problem, they're just going to really um, be lost in terms of what to do. So you bringing in your domain expertise and knowing that data science actually starts from the question, then you are really in the right position to begin to think about what is the question we're trying to answer. So I'm a drilling engineer or a well test engineer or well completions and you're thinking of, okay, what sort of questions we need to answer um, you know, within my profession? And you start to unpack it and bring in this programming statistics and all of that, you're, you're, uh, with all of that um, in place, you're producing the, the kind of results you want. Yeah, and of course, when you've done the modeling part of done all you want to do with your data, you need to be able to tell the story. You need to be able to you know, um, for someone who doesn't understand all, all the modeling, all the programming, all the statistics you've done, you need to be able to tell them the story to say, okay, this is a question and this is um, the answer to your question and explain it to them in a way that makes business sense. So if you, you're quantifying it in terms of cost, for example, in the in, now that we're looking at oil and gas and the future, so we might be look, um, trying to use um, data science to help reduce costs. You know, and we, we could use it for risk uh, management. We could be using it for um, making management decisions about, okay, what do we do now with the challenges that are really facing oil and gas? So those are the things you need to then interpret. That's where storytelling actually comes in. And of course, your domain expertise would really be handy there. Moving on. So who is or isn't a data scientist. So you can really see this um, different disciplines, data analysis, data scientist, data engineer, machine learning engineer. They are sort of connected. I think the common denominator is actually the data because all of them are working with data. All of them need to work with data. Uh, either the, the data is like an input to whatever they're doing or they just have to really handle data in some way, whether it's coming in the raw form or in a processed form, well, data is, is, is paramount. So let's look at, I just kind of broke it down based on what each of them are expected to deliver. And just bear in mind that there are lots of overlap, right? There are lots of overlap for these different positions. So you might even um, find a job description that says, oh, we're looking for data scientists. And everything that is listed there is, is just a data analyst job. You know, or it might be data analyst job and they're just listing data scientist roles and all that. So you need to be aware that there are overlaps. And sometimes even companies, they, they don't really know what they want or they might know what they want, but they don't give it the right tag. You know, yeah, so, so for data analysts, they deliver meaningful insights and business reports from data. And then the data scientists would deliver the model or algorithm to extract insights, predict the future. So maybe they, uh, mainly data analysts, they are focusing on, okay, we want, just want to answer this question. We want to address the present, but data scientists will go a step further to predict the future or to even automate tasks from data. Then the data engineer, you know, without the data engineer, really the data scientists wouldn't be able to function properly because um, the data engineer would deliver the infrastructure and framework to process the data. So we have what we call a data pipeline. 
just the way in oil and gas you have the oil pipeline and you know that if that pipeline work in a pipeline construction company so if we don't have that pipeline there is no way that oil is going to go from wherever it's coming from the production cycle to, to the end user so um data engineer is the one that delivers the infrastructure and framework to be able to process the data to be able to um you know do your modeling and all of that of course the ml engineer really combines the skills of both data engineer and data scientists to accomplish their role okay so um so we're going to <clears throat> obviously unpack this data science thing a bit more but you know before we get to the science of it we need to talk about data i know data is something <clears throat> we all talk about like in different forms so if you say oh i don't have data in terms of i don't have um a way to connect to the internet but now let's look at data in terms of the, um information in terms of um, big data, the kind of devices that are out there today, like smartphones, Internet of Things, um, sensors, you know, different um, devices, even like social media, like you have YouTube with um, tons of data being created in, in an hour. I think for YouTube, they say it's like 500 um, every, every hour. I, I can't remember the, the stats again. But then um, we have so many V's now of big data. So you have volume, like it's going, it's very vast. Like there's a large amount of data being produced. You have velocity, you know, that data is being generated really, really quickly. So every, every minute, every second, people are uploading videos on YouTube. You know, every, every second you have like a sensor that's just taking temperature readings so that very, very quick, like in, in streams, sometimes in batches, right? We have variety, like, you know, the data can come in different forms. It could come as images, it could come as videos, in tabular form, in uh, <clears throat> categorical form, in numerical form, text, you know, different forms. So you have, that's why we talk about structured and unstructured, unstructured data, like, it's, it's more difficult to process. Ideally, you want like this, like this table, everything just neatly placed and arranged. But in reality, you're going to be faced with maybe data that um, on one part you have images, the other uh, part you have text, all talking about the same thing, you know, and you have to put all that together. Some may have missing data, some may have errors. So that is in reality what you're faced with and as a data scientist you have to think about how to take that um, raw data and, and, and unstructured data and put it in a form that your model can really um, work with now we have a um, veracity like it needs to be uh, you know like verified if, if the data they said your your model is as good as all the performance of your model is as good as the data you're feeding it with because if you're feeding the wrong data you just it's um giggle garbage in garbage out you know so what you put in is what you get and of course value you should have value and um, of course for, for your business case you need data that is valuable that can give you the kind of insights that you're looking for and um variability that's uh, talking about you know, um, data is going to come um, in in different forms, in different dimensions, and you know, even even when it's streaming, it could come at different speeds. So this uh, one could be coming every every second, the other one every minute or every five minutes. In different, it just comes with that, those different forms. So you need to deal with all of that. No, I, I've really heard a lot, you know, this phrase, data is the new oil. Data is the new oil, you know, and <laughs> I've kind of had to think about that. And it's quite interesting because now we are talking about data science and in the, uh, we're doing that in the setting of the energy industry, oil and gas. So when, when they say data is a new oil, maybe if we, it together we might begin to see 
relationship between data and oil. So my question is, is data really the new oil? Maybe um, depending on how you look at it. So if you think about um, oil as something really valuable, of course, at the, at the point you extract that oil, or at the point, you, let's just call it collection phase. So you drill, right? you do your extraction, and um, you have the crude oil, right? It goes through a crude pipeline. So you do, this pipeline you actually have, which can, which can be more complicated than this, um, you know, is, is the typical thing you're going to have in data science, really, in a data project. You're going to have a data pipeline where you have to collect your data. So you can think of it like the extraction phase. And at that point, the data is really in the raw form. You need to refine that data. You know, you can even, at that raw form, you can even store it. So you have like um, ways to store the data. So you just collect it from these, these different sources. So let's say you're collecting data, you're collecting video, um, you know, you're collecting text, numerical data, categorical data, all forms of data. When you collect all those data, you you could just store that data before it goes into the next phase, which, which is cleaning of the data, right? So you clean the data and you need to like put, um, extract insights from the data. So you can use that same data to answer 10 questions, 10 different questions. You'd be looking at 10 different things. You could be looking at, okay, what's the interval? What's, you know, just so many different questions you can answer. So that you can think of it as, you know, this crude oil being broken down into so many different components. So that's like the different questions you can answer with your data. You can imagine one crude oil can, you can get gasoline, diesel, fuel oil, etc. like so many different things you can get. So those of you in the oil and gas, you can really relate that. You have this oil pipeline, it's so complex. Maybe data, data project is not as complex as, of course, is, I don't think it is as complex as oil and gas, but it can give you a sense that um, you can't really be a jack of all trades. So you can't, and you might have to know little of different things, like how things work as a whole, but you probably have to specialize on a specific um, part. You might be better at data cleaning than at the modeling, or you might just, um, you know, prefer the exploratory data analysis, you know, that phase than building the model part. Or you could just like everything really as, as you move along. So in the, in the journey, don't think that, oh, I need to like get everything at once. You know, you, you could go through that um, process and with time you get to, as you work on projects, you get to master different things and, and, and really get better at a particular phase of it. So in that sense, is data the new oil? Yes, data is the new oil because you can find so many relationships. And of course data, you can also say data is valuable. Of course, you don't want to end at the data. You want to get to the point of insights. You want to get to the point of automating tasks, building models that can automate tasks um, with data. You want to get to the point of making um, business decisions. Actionable, getting actionable insights from the data. So you don't want to stop at just, okay, I have data. What are you doing with the data? Because a lot of data, they are out there, but they are being wasted because they are not being transformed from the raw data, the crude data to the insights. Okay, so now let's talk about the data science pipeline, right? So this is at least from looking at the oil and gas now, we are now looking at the data science pipeline so you can make some connections. So you have the data collection, right? Like you, you collect the data, you know, just the way you would extract the crude oil. You collect the data, so you would have that raw data. And of course, um, data cleaning is very, very important. You know, you need to clean the data, which can, we're going to look at that in more detail as we move on, but that data cleaning can take you a lot of time, depending on how complex the data is or how unstructured 
it is. So the more of those Vs you have, the variability, the variety, the volume, velocity, you know, the more of those Vs you have in your data, the more um, difficult the cleaning process or the more time consuming and complex the cleaning would be. And of course, um, the modeling as well. Then um, it's very important to visualize your data even before you start building the model because you even from visualizing the data, you would already start to see things that can inform you what sort of modeling um, you, you should be doing. So for example, you do get to see, is this more like an anomaly detection problem? Um, so you'd be looking at maybe some unsupervised techniques, or is it more of a, a binary classification problem? So by visualizing, you can even start to see some, some things emerge that can inform what you do, or you can it can even inform maybe the constraints you have to add to, to the modeling part. Yeah. And of course, when you've done the modeling, you want to evaluate your model and um, interpret the, the findings from the modeling. That's very, very important because if you just stop at modeling, nobody understands all the math or the algorithms. You still want to interpret it to say, okay, this is how. This has helped me to answer the questions I had at the beginning. And of course, when you're done with this part, you still want to return for new data. So you kind of have that continuous flow, yeah, continuous pipeline. Okay. Yes, so we have a quiz now. And uh, let's see. Okay, so um, you're going to put the answer on the chat just to make sure that we are following i'll bring up the quiz now and yeah whatever you option you choose you put it on the chat or if you're on youtube just put the, your answer and i'll check what the answers are okay so which is not one of the v's of big data velocity Vastness, variety, viscosity, variability. Okay, so uh, just give us a minute. Okay, so let's look at how we're doing. I mean, I could see most of us are going for viscosity. And uh, a few persons have vastness. Okay. So if you were paying attention, I actually mentioned, when I mentioned volume, I did mention vastness. Vastness is just a synonym of volume. So it's just it's vast, like so many. Actually, when you talk about big data, that's actually, we're talking about the volume of data that's being produced. So that is um, correct. So definitely viscosity. I know it's, it's a very common term when it comes to oil and gas, but for this one, no, it's not one of the Vs of big data. So um, you're correct when you say viscosity. Well done, well done everyone. Okay, so let's move on. Part two, data collection, preparation, and visualization. So um, I'll just run through these so that we can get done and I'll be happy to take your questions. 
data collection. So it's part of our pipeline, right? Like we want to collect the data. So let's look at data collection. So here you have, I'm just trying to minimize my, okay, cool. So you have this sources of data, right? You have structured data sources, unstructured, um, you know, you want to ingest that data into some data acquisition platform, like ATL, extract, transform, and load. And um, you know, from there, you can really store your data in the raw form. So you have like all these different sources to you bring it together. And to achieve these, you can use distributed storage, like Hadoop, Apache, um, Spark, or Flink. Then um, the kind of skills, so this is really like, what kind of skills would you need? That's why when I say data science is so, there are so many different aspects and you, um, whilst you or need to have to learn different things, like acquire different skills in the process. And with time, you get to see which one you are um, better at and you get to be better at all the different components. So you have database management, you have querying um, relation, relational databases so you need all this when you, when it comes to data collection and of course you want to be able to retrieve unstructured data like test videos audio files and documents so this is very very important because if you don't have your data in one place then how would you be able to you know build your model or even start cleaning the data then the next is we we'll look at so data structures, more like how do you um, store this data in a, a structured way such that you'll be able to query the data, you'll be able to use it to do several things that you want to, to do. And this is very, very, very important because you're going to deal with it a lot when um, you get to the working hands on on data science projects. So there are different data structures. You have built-in ones like integer flow to may be familiar with this character pointer. So these are built in, you already have them. Of course, you have the user defined ones, like you want to use arrays or lists or files, you know, like you even have data frames as well. And, and this can be in linear form or non-linear, like you can actually um, have your, your data in a tree form. So it branches out so, uh, or graph form. So, um, yeah, so these are the different structures that your data can take. And it's really very, very important that as a data scientist, you understand these different structures and where you need to use which. But sometimes you'll be working on the problem and you're using arrays, but arrays are not the best structure to use. So you have to know how to use all that forms of um, you know, data structures. Then data preparation. This is where um, cleaning of the data comes in, you know, from the storage, you're going to the cleaning part and some other things you need to do, you need to remove anomalies. But even in this anomaly remover, you need to be careful because some, some people, well, they could just, okay, um, this anomaly, I just want to remove it so that I get the model. So you're not trying to engineer your model to work for that data because if you do that, it's going to fail when it comes to new instances. So you be careful when it comes to uh, anomaly removal as well. Transformation, so you have you could need to transform your data um, into a, a different form. For example, it, it, even here you also talk about, let's say feature engineering. For example, you have current, you have voltage. So you could um, transform that to, you know, you know the power equation I times V, and you can just transform that to power and have a new feature for power and eliminate the two. So you might even have like three or four variables that you can have a different variable that um, encompasses those. So that's more like a um, feature um, selection process. And of course, when your data is not enough, it's small, you talk about data augmentation, how you can augment the data, and there are different techniques you can adopt to do that. So of course, for data preparation, you need um, to have a language like Python, R, 
data modifying tools like the um, Python libraries, you have NumPy, you have Pandas, and we talk about distributed processing as well, you can use Hadoop, MapReduce, or Spark and to help with this process. Then um, we then come to the data visualization. Like I said, it's very important that even when you, um, before you start building your model, that you're able to visualize your data because you even be able to see things that can actually start to give you insight into you know, what your, your data looks like and inform you, the modeling process. So we have, um, you know, Python, R, um, you know, statistics as well, and um, data visualization tools like Tableau as well, you can use those. Okay, another quiz. What is the most important thing in data science? So uh, just put the answer, or you can just say A, B, C, D, or E, or the data, statistics, knowledge, programming skills, the question you're trying to answer, working with large data sets. So whichever, just put um, your answer on the chat board. If you're here on WebEx or on YouTube, you can just put that on the, on the chat box. Okay. So I'm I'm just checking on YouTube as well to see what people are saying. Okay. I'll just keep quiet so that we won't be here. Okay. Okay, so let's see. A D A D so on YouTube. On YouTube, we have more A's than D's, and on WebEx, we have more D's than A's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, okay, interesting. All right, so back to the presentation. Right, so um, the A and D actually like the, the popular choices, the data, the question you are trying to answer. Why do you think it would be, I mean, if you chose the data or D, just give, just put it on the chat, the option you chose and why you think that would be the most important thing in data science. I just want to like peek into your brain and know what you're thinking actually. Okay, young Sam said, you must have the data before you can work with them. You can't work with what you don't have. Actually, that's interesting. Um, you must have your data first. Okay. And anybody on YouTube? Okay. Cindy Lehin said, the question you're trying to answer would guide your choice of tools and methods. Hmm, quite interesting. <laughs> Should have a debate right here. Okay, so 
actually they are, they are good answers. Uh, okay, um, we have more here. The question you're trying to answer detects the kind, volume, nature, form of data you would have to collect. Hmm. So Shama is actually coming from the point of before you even collect the data. <laughs> That's interesting. You know. Um, yeah, the question you're trying to answer determines the, the data. So I like the way um, you, you guys are thinking from the point of like I don't I have not even collected the data. Remember we when we started talking about this pipeline, we said the data collection is part of the pipeline. So you might have the data there, just like your your crude oil is already there, right? It's buried there. It's it's there. But before you even start drilling, there are things that you need, there are decisions you need to, to uh, make or questions you need to ask. So before you even start collecting the data, you know, the question you are trying to answer should guide you on what kind of data you collect. And that kind of data, it could already be there. For example, if I want to do, we want to analyze, you know, the usage of YouTube, like how many, what, what are people, um, what kind of content are people putting out there? And I want to analyze all the YouTube videos that have been uploaded for the past one month, right? Like the, that data is there already. But my question, like my initial question, of course, there's other questions that are going to come up as you proceed because insights can lead you. Remember the grouping. So insights can lead you, or an interpretation can lead you to, okay, I need to look at this other um, aspect of the data. And then you go back to the, the beginning point, right? So um, that question, that initial question you have will even guide you in the decision about what kind of data do I need to collect in the first place. So whether the data is already available out there, like your crude oil maybe locking around somewhere and just needs some extraction, or whether you need to start collecting the data and have to design data collection methods you know, whatever be the case, the question you're trying to answer is important. And like um, I said earlier on, your domain knowledge, this is where it's going to play a very key role. So for those of you that are, are the energy professionals, don't feel that, okay, maybe I'm being left out in this whole conversation about digital transformation, data science, is not for me. No, really, because if the question you're trying to answer is a certain point, then your domain expertise is going to really come in handy. It's going to be very, very um, useful to setting those initial questions and, and, and proceeding to the next step. Thank you for your answers. So just proceed from here. I hope that is that makes sense to you. So now the top part is data modeling and interpretation. This is where the, the mathematicians will smile. So um, here, we really like, you know, you have prepared your data. Um, I don't want to go too technical, but you know, you when when you're modeling, we have what we call training data sets, validation data set. So your validation data set is actually what you're using to um, tune your hyperparameters. Hyperparameters are the choices you have to make within the model, um, like um, your learning rates. How there's things you need to set you know, those settings and your validation data sets, you're not using it for the training part, you're using it to tune the um, hyper parameter. And that, that happens within that learning loop. Well, what we call learning. So it's an algorithm that just, just keep going through it, iterating and iterating until you get um, to the, the number of training period or whatever you have set as the criteria to stop the training. So the whole training and what happens with your hyperparameter tuning and validation, that is what you call learning. You know, you design a learning algorithm that you, uh, does these iterations then to get you to the point where you say, okay, I have a trained model. And we have different, um, we can use machine learning algorithms. Remember we talked earlier about machine learning engineers. This is really like their department, they love this. 
um, they could use supervise, semi supervised, unsupervised algorithm. I will go so in depth into that. That's like another course on its own. And uh, you, you'd need to understand evaluation methods because not every evaluation method would work for your problem or your question or your kind of data. And not every evaluation method would even work for the algorithm you choose. So you need to have an understanding of the evaluation method. How do you evaluate that your model is good, that this model, so if you have like five models, how do you decide that this mo model A produced better results than other models, and this is the one we should put into production? Then you have your machine learning libraries, like um, you have Python libraries and so many um, other libraries out there. Of course, like here, you really need knowledge of linear algebra and calculus, which is that learning algorithm we talked about. Understanding of linear algebra and calculus will be very, be very, very useful for, for it. Then um, there are so many different evaluation measures, classification accuracy, logarithmic loss, confusion metrics, area on that curve, F1 score, mean absolute error, mean squared error. Actually, um, if you have, let's say, a highly unbalanced data set, I worked on a project that, you know, we had a highly unbalanced data set, 80% were normal, 20% were abnormal. So if you're just using accuracy, classification accuracy for this, you might be misled. But we actually use accuracy plus F1 score. So F1 score was actually, because um, the, the data set is imbalanced. So F1 score will actually give you, um, and one of the models was not performing well at all when it comes to failure. So it wasn't telling us what was the, um, you know, it wasn't learning anything with respect to the number that, that, that failed or the number of abnormal. But with that F1 score, you kind of get a balance and you kind of really see how the model performs on an unbalanced data set. So it's very, very important to understand the different evaluation measures. Then, of course, you need to interpret the results. You know, um, that requires domain knowledge, you can also use data visualization, and you need to be able to communicate that result to the right audience in form of presenting or, or writing reports as well. Then you know that just like in, in the oil and gas, when you're done with the evaluation, what they call evaluation well or something, and you then go into production, right? So you have this, <laughs> you install this Christmas tree, do your well completions, install, and you start producing. But you'd also need to keep going back to update your model periodically. And that would depend on how often data arrives and the changes of the nature of the business, really. Like if there's a significant change, you need to like, you can't be using the, the old model to, to work. Okay, so I said I'll, I'll finish up by giving you a data scientist um, toolbox. And um, yeah, this is, <laughs> as you would expect, there are so many things in this toolbox, going from data collection where you have structured and structured um, data, and you can aggregate this and do an exploratory data analysis. You're looking at the data properties, um, duplicates, detection, you want to de detect whether there are duplicates in the data, feature properties, process mining. Then you go to take, it takes you to your learning task, really. Like what learning task, is, are you doing a regression? Are you doing a classification? What evaluation methods you want to use? Like we, were, we mentioned, is it accuracy, root mean squared error, mean absolute error, um, you know? And then you go to algorithm selection. So what, do you want to use a black box model, which kind of hides a lot of things, like if they are not very explainable? Or do you want to use a, a white box model like decision, um, decision tree, Gaussian process? You know, but uh, official neural network is a black box model or, or um, SGBoost. So you have to select your algorithm. You do some feature engineering as well, like feature selection and all of this. And of course, you have to tune your model. You can use cross validation, hyperparameter optimization. Now, all of these things, of course, down to result interpretation. All of these, like, if we had to unpack them, these are like lectures. But as, we, as I mentioned earlier, this is an introduction. So um, I don't want it to get overwhelming. And of course, we don't have much time to unpack anything. So this is really like an introduction for you. So um, 
It's actually, um, a, there's a course that is, is upcoming and it fits nicely with this um, area, data science for energy professionals. So this is more for like, if you want to really um, develop your hands on skills, using your, your professional expertise. You know, if you think, okay, I'm a petroleum engineer, I'm an oil and gas professional, and there is no space for me in data science, you are, you know, you're missing out really. But you can actually, um, like we said, the question you're trying to answer is important. Your domain expertise is important. And then when you bring that and tie that to other skills you need to gain, then you can, um, you can um, forge ahead with um, the, the course as well. So um, if you are interested and if you want to maybe have like a chat as well about how can you transition into data science, I'm just going to put the link on the chat so um, you can have a look and, and, and you know, book a slot or register for the course. Okay, so I think that's where I, I, I stop. And uh, yeah, you can connect with me on LinkedIn or on, on Twitter. I believe it. So if you have any question, um, you can put that on the chat. Can put a question on the chat. I think we we actually started at about one thirty, so we are most like just have about three minutes based on the yeah. So if you want to yeah, if you have a question, put it on the chat. I'll be happy to answer. Does anyone have any questions? No. Okay. Um, he's asking if we can have the slide. I think that um, I can send it to the organizers and they'll be able to send it across to those that register. Okay, all right. So I think I would I'll say thanks a lot, everyone, for, for joining the course. And um, yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, or like I said, if you're interested in taking like a further step to to grow your career in the area of data science, then you can um, register for a more advanced course as well. So. Okay, Shoma is asking, how long will it take for a starter to become a professional data scientist or machine learning expert? Um, that, that's a very a great question. So, um, like I said, the, it's just like asking, how long will it take to be maybe an oil and gas professional, really? But because I'll say if you, you, you start out by learning, so you, now you have like a roadmap of the, the journey, the data science toolbox, the data science pipeline. So if you know the things that are involved in learning this, and I'll say if you do like, um, you know, a, a course, let's say a five weeks course that can ground you on, you know, how to to solve problems in in the oil and gas or whatever industry. You know, that's like a starting point. And then as you begin to then work on projects, you're going to learn and pick up new skills as as you move along. So, um, you know, yeah, so the starting point would be, you know, learn the, the 
go deeper in this course. So this is an introduction. So you go deeper, you know, take a course that can ground you. And from there, you keep working on projects, hands on projects. And yeah, that, that should help. Can you suggest online courses to learn data science, which does not relate to energy or petroleum engineering? Um, okay, so there are there are courses out there. I mean, if you go on um, Coursera, like you could find general courses. So what, what field exactly would that be? Because if you just want general data science, yeah, you can find courses on um, Coursera or Udemy. Um, the one that I shared was basically if you want to, um, if you want to really grow your skills in your in that industry, in oil and gas industry, yeah, then that's what you go for. But if you want a general data science, you can check out Coursera, um, Udemy. Yeah, those courses are quite general. Like you can really. Um, like learn new stuff in the general data science space yeah so um yeah any other questions okay i think that i have to I've exhausted my time so i have to leave now All right Okay. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, that was a very insightful uh, presentation and very resourceful too. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, we appreciate everyone so far. It has been a lovely uh, day, learning so many things. Okay. Um, link. Um, I mean, the slide will be sent to. Our email for those of us that participated, the link in the slides, some of us created for the slides to be sent mm -hmm. to us. And and the slides, we can have a link in, a link in, a link in this day. We could all, in case we have personal uh, questions we'd like to ask her, I would like to know a bit. As you said earlier, it's just the beginning, it's just an introduction. There's a lot about data science that is yet to be uncovered mm -hmm. to us. And um, it would be very good if we, you know, have um, more relationship with her, you know, to get to do better. Thank you so much um, for this opportunity. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you for staying. And thank you. I appreciate everyone who participated today. It has been a lovely session. All right. Um, we'll mostly continue tomorrow. Don't let us forget. But before then, we would have the president, you know, address us uh, this time. So, um, to sub. We'll see. Um, thank you very much, um, Paul, for the moderation for today. A uh, big thank you to uh, Miss Marilyn Ndubaku for at least trying to ensure that for the past one hour and a half she has introduced everyone to data science, what steps to take, what areas you can start focusing on as a student or as a professional. So we appreciate that you have busy schedule to um to talk to us this this afternoon. So I like I'd like you to every one of us to you know, check out uh, the website that has been sent to the chat box frontier.com. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities down there for Thank you.